All right, in this video, we're going to then switch gears and start talking about monsters, which are very similar to creating uh, game objects. In fact, the interface is almost identical. Um, now, we haven't loaded any monster graphics, so we're going to create some real quick. I'm going to open up my pixel editor, and I'm going to open my monster 000, zero, zero right here, that tile set. I'm going to turn on 16 by 16, and I'm going to make an evil square monster. Now, right now, I'm looking at background palettes. I want to look at monster palettes, and I want to look at a new monster palette. So let's use this one right here, monster palette one. I'm going to name it Mon Pal. This is a, this is a real monster palette one, and I'm going to rename it. And what color do we want our monsters? I'll tell you what. I want his outline shadow color to be that dark blue color, same as my player. And I'm going to make him easy to see against that background. So I'm going to make him yellow and purple. I don't know. So I'm going to use a rectangle tool. And I'm going to make a rectangle all around the outside. I could use the line tool for this too. Oops. Missed. There we go. I'm going to zoom in just so I can see that a little bit easier. Um, now I'm going to put, I'm going to turn on the pixel so I can see where, what I'm doing. Uh, let's translate that and I'm going to make, he's going to mostly be purple and I'm going to make, give him some evil eyes here and a nose Oops. and he's frowning. He's not happy. Okay, so there's my evil monster. We're not going to spend a lot of time. Uh, I'm going to save that. And now I've got a monster palette set up and a monster graphic set up. Uh, I'm going to go to graph Monster Graphics Bank 0 and click on Monsters. And you can see my little monster graphic is here. I'm going to change to Monster Palette. Now, uh, this is another thing that's a little bit confusing to understand. Uh, the gra the colors that I'm using right here, they're not the actual colors that I'm going to see this monster as. They might be if I load them as the colors for a screen. The, the palettes are controlled by the screen. Um, so I, I need to make sure that if I design them with this palette on the screen I want to place them, I put that palette. Otherwise, like if this palette was loaded, he would look like that. And if this palette was loaded, he'd look like that and if this palette was loaded he's going to look like that so um this is just sort of a reference for what he looks like i'm going to make him this is what it should like frame count look frame count width and height that's what the other screen should look like so i'm not sure why it got off um and i forgive us for that um i'm going to do this the same way i did my game objects shift and drag and there i've got a monster i'm not going to add any animations i'm not going to do anything we're just going to go through this kind of quick i'm going to go to object details and I'm going to make him a monster type object and I'm going to give him like a health of one and I'm going to give him sort of a slower speed than my player. Maybe he's half the speed of my player and but I'm going to give him full acceleration. I do need to set what happens to this guy if he runs into a solid object though. So I'm going to make him reverse direction if he gets to a solid object and reverse direction oops, if he gets to the edge of a screen. Uh, his actions uh, I want this guy to move. I want him to move around. So I'm going to make him move in four directions. He's going to move in a random uh, choice of one of four directions. I'm going to set a timer. Now, the timer, if it's zero, that means it's set to a random timer. One would be an incredibly fast timer, and then all the way up to 15, which would be the slowest possible timer. So uh, I, go, I generally want my monsters to behave relatively randomly. So I'm going to say when the action timer is done, I'm going to have him repeat this action. So he's just going to stay in a loop on zero, but he's not just going to loop. Every time that that action timer goes up, out, he's going to change his direction. He's going to pick a new random direction again. Um, if, he, he was, if he was animated, I could also determine, you know, instead of that, I could say he loops until his animation is over. So imagine that you had a monster, for instance, who you had wind up to, sh to throw, right? So like at the end of his throw animation, then he created the fireball. So I'd put the end of the animation, something happens. Uh, here, I'm not going to use the end of animation. I'm just going to use the end of the action timer. Um, and I'm going to give him a bounding box and just keep it a little bit inside of him like this. Right, a little wider than that. Let's make it symmetrical. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to call this guy... Sad square. I'm going to save him. 
and you'll see he shows up in my monsters. In order to place him in a room, uh, I'm going to go to monster groups and I'm going to set all of my choices for this group to sad square. And I'm going to call the group sad squares. Okay. And hit save. So basically that's how to create a monster. And, you know, you can look back at the game object tutorial to understand how to set up his animations. Uh, one of the difference between objects and uh, game objects and monsters is uh, the player object that we set up and these other game objects is that we, we determine this part, the action steps and whatever. Whereas with the game object, uh, that's the player, um, the input is really controlling what action step that I jump to. So this guy like moves on his own and, you know, this is his AI. The player doesn't have AI. The player is controlled. So the controls are what's changing which step he's on and which animation he's showing and, and which animation speed he's using and that kind of thing. So just something to keep in mind. Um, to place him on the screen, it's very, very simple. I'm going to go to Overworld. Uh, and I need to go to Screen Info. And since this is day normal, I'm going to day monsters. And what monster group do I want to use? And what palette do I want to use? And this is what I was talking about. This is where I'm setting the palette of what color the monster is going to be. Over there, when I was creating them, that's just a reference. But now I'm actually setting. I'm saying, yes, that's the color I want them to use. So now I can right click somewhere on the screen. And another little bug is you'll notice our player just changed the color that he is. Don't worry, he's going to show up correct in the game. Um, so now if I actually play, that monster is actually going to be moving around the screen. Um, and if he interacts with me, I'll quote unquote die. We haven't talked about what that means yet, but uh, you'll see in a second that the monster is, run is moving around. And there we go. Monster's moving around the screen and changing it random and we get to the edge. So awesome. We are getting there. We're starting to make some things happen. Um, let's, uh, let's stop there for with monsters. And next we're going to look on, uh, change, you know, working with uh, player's input.